Thank you so much. Hope I'm audible. Let me begin with a disclaimer, because the previous spotlight by Dakshin Murthy has set a stage high by showing interesting pictures of Shah Rukh Khan. Uh, my presentation will not have any of those. Let's go a bit deeper and um, put a practitioner's view to where we are on Gen AI, right? A lot of POCs were discussed. A lot of interesting use cases have been identified, and the people are building it. POCs are good. Okay. Good. Thanks. POCs are good, but they are not good enough. Now, how do you scale these Gen AI solutions across the enterprise is what we are going to discuss. Let me see if it works. Can you help? Okay. Okay. These numbers are not new for anybody, right? This is an AI summer, that's what people are calling. Close to four business use case in a given business function of any enterprise is getting into production, and this is getting scaled with Gen AI coming into play. And not to mention the added value of two to four trillion dollars that is being estimated just because of Gen AI coming into play, right? A very recent report of the McKinsey. But the challenges are also evolving because of this. And some of these have already been discussed in the panel, and one is the infrastructure. Imagine an engineer, right? He needs to build something on Gen AI, and he needs to really identify what are the different techniques to do it, where the data resides, and moreover, multiple business units are building something on Gen AI which are not talking to each other. Now, how do you provision the right infrastructure for even to innovate or scale? This is a real challenge. The second is for the technical folks. There are challenges with respect to fine tuning, prompt injection, context length being not sufficient, inadequate sandbox being provided for the people, and catastrophic forgetting uh, being the challenge, hallucination, which has been called out many times today, as well as the infrastructure, right? Compounding that is the next challenge, which is operational in nature, which means, should I build, should I buy, or should I partner with somebody to even build the solutions? Right? And even if it gets built, is it scalable enough? The output, is it responsible for me to tell my business users to consume this? Right? And these are the practical challenges for any practitioners who are in the room who are working with Gen AI solutions. Now, if you take a step back and try to bucketize the kind of problems everybody is solving in the area of Gen AI, you could put a toss into four different kitties. Either it is a simple prompt engineering, calling an open AI call with your context to get your relevant answer, or it could be a RAG-based approach that is being put across for your proprietary data of your company to get a relevant answer, or it could be a fine-tuned model or you're trying to build everything from scratch. The interesting piece at each of these layers is the process that is involved is completely different, right? In case of prompt engineering, it's about ability to do a chain of thoughts, prompt tuning management, and not to mention the number of tools that come into way there. And if you take in the RAG world, it has a different processes altogether. And compound to that is some of these models are proprietary in nature, some of them are open source, some of them are in the cloud environment, which are restricted, and some of them are opinionated, you know, vendors who provide this solution. Now, how do you stitch all to this together is a nightmare for any given application to scale in the world of Gen AI, right? Which lends me to this, what is LLM ops? We are hearing this word many times, at least in the literature. It is an extension of the existing ML ops that was there, but it has a distinct flavor that is being brought in. And the flavors are in the orange box that we are depicted, right? Earlier, we never used to manage a vector databases. We never used to manage a prompt. There is no prompt versioning being put across. There was no concept of saying, how do you measure the hallucination of the model? Now, these are all the different terminologies and the topology that are getting built within the solution architecture that we need to start thinking more, right? The ingestion layer has not changed much. 
But the layer within the training and the ML component are undergoing drastic changes. And one of these is because to enable LLMs to fit into the existing analytics framework. With that said, it's not just about building this model. It's more about engineering concepts that we need to worry about. There are not only these new LLM models that are coming in, that obviously are, but the amount of tools that are getting built across the solutioning of this Gen AI solution are tremendously increased. Let me take an example. The vector databases, there are a plethora of them, right? So which one should I choose for my given use case? Which one should I choose for a deployment option if it is a near real time I need to get an answer, I don't need to wait for a 30 second call with the open AI? What is the inference engine I should use? And then application and the monitoring part of it. And any practitioner in this room will empathize with me that this is not a trivial task to stitch all of these tools together to bring out a solution. And for that, this is a journey most of the companies are currently adopting. This is still at an infancy, at a nascent stage. Most of the enterprises that we talk to are either in the stage one or two, which is they identified a foundational model. They are tweaking that foundation model for their business application, and they have got some results which are getting deployed at a scale, for a mini scale, I would say, for their enterprise or for their clients. However, the challenge is how can we go to the reliable ML ops and the scalable LLM ops, which needs a complete shift into the entire project. With that being said, for a practitioner, this is how a view look like. Assuming you have an LLM of infrastructure, it is like a restaurant menu card to choose a right foundational model which would work best for a use case rather than you going and asking everybody. How can you apply the right patterns on top of it? How do you apply the multiple agents? And how do you experiment in the sandbox environment with the right prompts and the tuning and the version control already available with the tools such that you can easily scale? And this is how it will look like couple of months from now when there will be many applications of Gen AI flowing into uh, the applications layer. With that, I'll try to conclude saying we ran this experiment in-house on a couple of approaches, whether it is really making a dent or is it just on the PowerPoint. We typically saw that at least on the foundation, discovery, test and deploy skill set, you could get 40% more efficiency if you have a right accelerator right infrastructure of LLM ops for building your Gen AI. I just conclude saying it is not the latest or the greatest model that brings the value. It is a model that gets operationalized. That is where the value is. Thank you, gentlemen.